Alright, let's talk about the Galaxy S26, because things are getting interesting, and a little worrying depending on how you look at it. Samsung is getting ready to launch the Galaxy S26 series on February 25th, 2026. That sounds far away, but trust me, the leaks have already started flying in, and the latest one is a Geekbench score that gives us a pretty good idea of what kind of performance Samsung is aiming for next year. But more importantly, this leak brings back the same old question we ask every single year. Can Exynos finally match Snapdragon, or is it the same story again? So here's the setup. Samsung is planning to use two different chips for the Galaxy S26 lineup. The Ultra model will most likely get Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 everywhere in the world. No surprise there, that's what Samsung usually does for the Ultra. But the regular Galaxy S26 and the S26 Plus are expected to use Samsung's own chip, the Exynos 2600, in some regions. Other regions will still get Snapdragon. And Samsung says the Exynos 2600 should perform at a similar level to Snapdragon this time. That's the big claim. Now let's see what the numbers are saying. A Geekbench test for a Snapdragon-powered Galaxy S26 has already shown up, and the scores are, honestly, very high. Single-core score is 3,815. Multi-core score is 11,555. Those are strong numbers, especially that single-core score. And this is important, so let me explain this in very simple terms. Single-core performance is what makes your phone feel fast in daily use. Things like opening apps, scrolling through social media, switching between apps, using the camera, all of that depends a lot on single-core speed. So when you tap on something and it opens instantly, that's single-core performance doing its job. Multi-core performance matters more for heavy tasks, stuff like video editing, long gaming sessions, or heavy background work. Important, yes, but not something most people push all the time. So when we look at phones, single-core scores really matter for how smooth and fast the phone feels every day. And this is where the problem starts for Exynos 2600. According to a very reliable tipster, Ice Universe, the Exynos 2600 is expected to struggle in single-core performance. Current estimates say it might top out at around 3,500. Now, that might sound close to 3,815, but in phone performance, that gap is not small. That's a noticeable difference. And when Snapdragon is already ahead in single core, it means Snapdragon phones will likely feel faster and smoother, especially after months or years of use. Now let's talk about the Exynos 2600 itself. This chip is built on a 2 nanometer process using GAA technology. On paper, that sounds amazing. Smaller number, newer tech, better efficiency, better performance, at least that's how it should work. Samsung really needs this chip to succeed. Exynos has had a rough reputation for years. People complain about heating, battery drain, weaker performance, and worse gaming compared to Snapdragon. Samsung knows this, users know this, everyone knows this. So Exynos 2600 is supposed to be the comeback chip. But based on what we're hearing so far, it looks like Samsung is still playing catch-up. Single-core performance already looks lower than Snapdragon, and then there's the GPU side. Leaks suggest that Exynos 2600 could also fall behind in graphics performance. That means gaming, animations, and heavy visual tasks may not be as smooth compared to Snapdragon. Again, this does not mean Exynos 2600 will be bad. Let's be very clear about that. It will still be a powerful chip. Most users will not have a terrible experience. Social media will work fine, videos will be smooth, daily tasks will be easy. But when you're paying flagship money, fine is not enough. People want the best. And this is where Samsung's decision becomes questionable. If Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is clearly better in performance, efficiency, and graphics, why not use it everywhere? Samsung has done that before. We've seen years where Samsung went all Snapdragon globally because Exynos wasn't ready. 
So if Exynos 2600 ends up being noticeably weaker, Samsung's going to face a lot of criticism again. People in Exynos regions will feel like they're getting a worse phone, even though they're paying the same price. And that hurts trust. Now here's the part that really matters. Samsung says Exynos 2600 will be comparable to Snapdragon. But comparable can mean many things. It can mean close in benchmarks but worse in real life. It can mean similar in light use but weaker in gaming. Or it can mean good at launch but worse after updates. We've seen all of this before. Snapdragon chips usually age better. They hold performance longer, manage heat better, and keep battery life more stable over time. So even if Exynos starts close, the long-term experience is still a big question mark. And remember, those Snapdragon Geekbench scores we saw? That's just the baseline. That's the target Exynos 2600 needs to hit. And right now, it looks like it may fall short, especially in the one area that matters most for daily speed, single core. So where does that leave the Galaxy S26? If you get the Ultra with Snapdragon, you're probably getting a beast, no worries there. If you get the regular S26 or S26 Plus with Exynos, the phone will still be good, but you may always feel like you're missing out on something better, and that's not a great feeling as a botter. Samsung is in a tough spot. They want to push their own chip, they want to save costs, they want control over their hardware, but users want performance, they want fairness, they want the same experience everywhere. If the gap is small, maybe Samsung can get away with it, but if the gap is clear, especially in speed and gaming, expect a lot of noise online. So for now, the story is simple. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 has set a very high bar. Exynos 2600 needs to reach it, and based on early info, that's going to be very hard. We still need real-world tests, we still need final hardware, things can change, but right now, the pressure is on Samsung. This could be the year Exynos proves everyone wrong, or the year Samsung finally admits Snapdragon is still king. We'll keep watching the leaks closely.